In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a multi-camera shoot with your Blackmagic Designs A10 Mini. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This is part three in a multi-part series about the new A10 Mini. In previous videos, I've showed you how to get your A10 Mini configured and streaming to Facebook Live using OBS, in my second video, I talked about audio and went over some of the nice features that the Mini has for audio. In the next video in this series, I'll talk about how to bring your lyrics in from a projection computer and overlay that over your video. So if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up a multi-camera shoot with the A10 Mini. First, I'll talk through what cameras I'd use and how I'd arrange them then how to wire it all up, and finally, I'll end with some thoughts about monitoring your video and what to do about the fact that the A10 Mini doesn't have a multi-view output. So the way I'm gonna approach this is how I would do it if I were creating a multi-camera setup using the A10 Mini, with an eye towards doing it effectively, but also keeping it very budget conscious. The reason I say that is because this isn't the only way to do it. You could have different cameras, different room sizes and logistics to deal with, a different volunteer pool to pull from, all of which could change the approach you take when setting up your system. But I hope as I show you how I'm setting up the various pieces to my system, you'll gain a foundation for building out the system that you need. Let's talk about the four inputs to the switcher. I'm gonna be bringing in a feed from a computer that is running Lyric software and overlaying that over my video. So that computer will be connected to input four of the A10 Mini. That leaves me with three cameras to work with. I'm gonna use a Canon R800 for a static lockdown wide shot of my room, and I like to have that connected to input one of my switcher. I teach my volunteers who are directing video that if you ever get lost and don't know what to do, go to camera one and you'll always have a shot that's usable. When you panic, hit camera one. A common place to put this camera is in the center back of your room. It could be right in your tech booth, maybe even right next to your mini. But I'm starting to actually prefer this shot to be a side shot where the stage is on one side of the frame and the congregation is on the other. I've just been liking the way this shot feels and I think it gives a better sense of the room and therefore a better use of a static wide establishing shot. For my second camera, I'm gonna have that be my close follow shot that is manned by an operator. This camera will be what I use to get close-ups and follow the speaker if they walk around on stage. This would be a good camera to invest a little more money in and possibly get controls for the zoom and focus for the operator to use on their handles. The Canon G21 would work well. Also, let me just say it's really important to invest in a nice fluid head for the tripod. I've got some links to a few suggestions for those down in the description of this video. A good tripod is something to invest in. It potentially is gonna outlast your camera several times over and be with you for a long time and it makes a huge difference in the stability of your shots. For the third camera, I'm gonna use a PTZ camera. I've got the PTZ Optics 30X NDI camera, but you could use the 12X model depending on the distance to your stage. I'm gonna position that right next to my manned camera in the center back of the room. You can control the PTZ Optics camera right here in OBS with an additional plugin that you install. And I also have a video about how to control them using an Elgato Stream Deck. I'm gonna have these two cameras operating in two different modes, for lack of a better term. One for worship and singing, where the pace of my shots will be a little quicker, and then a second mode when someone is speaking and I wanna follow them closely. In the first mode for faster paced stuff, I'm gonna have my PTZ camera on whoever the lead singer is for a song. And I can program memory presets for those locations into the camera. Then I'll have the manned camera picking up special interest shots, close-ups of the guitar player when he plays a lead, a shot of the drummer, or various other shots that they will be cycling through. A manned camera can change and react to different shots a lot quicker than you can with a PTZ camera. So that's why I have them doing those shots. Then in the second mode, when someone is speaking, I'll change that up and have the manned camera operator follow the main subject in a cowboy shot, and the PTZ camera move to a medium shot of the stage, or a full length shot of the person speaking. So that's my camera layout. Now let's talk about how to wire up these cameras. 
The A10 Mini only has HDMI inputs, and my general rule of thumb is never run HDMI cables longer than 15 feet. So if your Mini is located in your tech booth in your worship space, and you're using something like my camera arrangement, camera two and three could be located right in the booth with you. In that case, just run HDMI cables from those nearby cameras to the Mini. But for my static camera number one, it's across the room, so I need to run a longer cable. HDMI was designed to connect your DVD player to your TV, or your Xbox to your TV. It wasn't really ever meant to send HD video signals over long distances. So while you may find longer HDMI cables, and all sorts of gimmicks for extending HDMI cables, the vast majority of those are just that, a gimmick, and you're gonna pull your hair out dealing with them. In my experience, the most reliable and robust way to extend HDMI is to convert the signal at the camera to SDI using an HDMI to SDI converter, then run the distance from your camera to the switcher with an SDI cable, and then at the switcher, convert the SDI signal back to HDMI with another one of these Blackmagic Designs converters. You can run SDI cables up to 300 feet without any issues. So my advice is to run SDI cable whenever you can. And an added benefit of this is that someday if you upgrade your cameras and your video system, you'll already have the cabling in place to support an SDI system. Okay, I know the question that is on a lot of your minds. How do I get a multi-view with the A10 Mini? I know this because you've asked it a hundred times already here on my channel. Here's my answer and it might not be popular, but I think it's the right answer. The A10 Mini does not have multi-view, and if you really need multi-view, save up and get the ATEM TVS HD, which has multi-view built in. There are a lot of videos here on YouTube that will show you how to rig up a bunch of splitters and adapters and create a multi-view. And that will work, and I'll link to one of the better ones down in the description of this video. But there are two problems I see with doing this. One, you'll be introducing a whole bunch of failure points and complications into your setup. And second, by the time you've spent money on all the peripheral devices you'll need to make this work, you've almost spent as much as you need for the ATM TVS HD, which not only has multi-view, but also has SDI inputs and an aux output, so a lot more functionality for the cost. Now there is one exception where I think it would become cost-effective to rig up a multi-view, and that's if you're converting all your inputs to SDI cables already. Maybe your switcher is in a control room isolated from your event space and you need to run longer cables anyways, or all your cameras already have SDI outputs. Either way, the Blackmagic Designs converters from SDI to HDMI that you'll already be using to convert your inputs back to HDMI for the switcher, they have this pass-through connector that lets you run the SDI to another device as well. In that case, then I think it makes sense to use the Blackmagic Designs MultiView 4, which takes four SDI inputs and generates a multi-view on the output. And it has an HDMI output that you can run to any TV. So in that situation where you're already converting everything to and from SDI, then I think it can make sense to add multi-view. But if you're not, let's talk about how to run your event without multi-view. The first strategy you'll wanna use is to put the Mini into program preview mode. You'll need to run the ATEM setup program and change the default cut bus to program preview. What that does is change how the four camera buttons and the cut and fade buttons operate. In the default cut bus mode, you select a cut or a fade, and when you press a camera button, that transition occurs immediately. When you're in program preview mode, you select a camera input and the button turns green. The green input is routed to the preview bus, so if we change the HDMI output to preview and connect a monitor to the HDMI output of the Mini, we can see that camera feed even though it's not live on the program output. To take the camera live to the program output, press the cut or fade button. So in this way, even though we don't have a multi-view to see all of our cameras, we can see what a camera is doing before we send it to our video. Another thing to consider is how many of your inputs do you really need to see? In my setup, I know the fourth input is my lyrics content, and I know that camera one is a static shot. Already that's half my inputs I know what's on them without having to see them. For camera two and three, you may want to be able to see what they're doing all the time. If you have a comm system and are directing the camera operator, or just to set up your PTZ shots. In that case, an option is to get a monitor with HDMI pass-through. 
I've got links to a few of these down in the description of this video. To set this up, you run the HDMI coming from your camera into the monitor first, and then the output from the monitor into the mini. Now we have a dedicated monitor to see what's on one of our cameras. So that's it. We're ready to live stream a multi-camera event with our ATEM Mini. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to get lyrics and graphics into your switcher. So be sure and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.